Today I'm going to show you how to do a select from the database and what people mainly use this for is to do recipe management. So if you're going to download your recipe out of your database. I'm going to create my project. Say automotive recipe. And I'm going to double click on that guy and it's going to open up our project editor. From there, I can double click on automation and see what PLCs I have available based off my Ethernet IP configuration we did. I'm going to go ahead and use this Control Logics PLC. So if I right click on that, I can open up the tag list. And then we can see all the tags in that PLC. We support UDT tags. Um, all the regular data types that you would have in your PLC. We support arrays with T-Manager also. Next, I'm gonna add my database. I'm gonna be connecting to a Microsoft SQL database. So you'll right click on automation and do new adapter, new Microsoft SQL adapter. And then you'll just enter in either your IP address of your database or the DNS name and your SQL Server authentication username. I can click validate connection. Connection is valid. I'm going to go ahead and enumerate the database. So this is where if you it's where you select what all you want to have access to. So I'm going to go ahead and click all and do that again and then if I come down here to tables I can see what all the tables I have access to through team manager from that connection we just made so you can scroll and see now if we go to our database this is the table that we're going to be using I had already configured as my table for my recipes for my automotive assembly line. So we're going to be actually scanning this RFID tag and then from there based off what that tag number is in the PLC, that's going to be our trigger and so if it's so if it's a 2 in the PLC, then we're going to pull in the GM model, the 9439 paint type, the 42 paint level the 6382 oil type and the 13.1 oil volume as our tags to assemble that particular model of car. So if I come back to my team manager software, the first thing I like to do is kind of a template is to open up the message path. And since we're doing a select, I'm gonna click on that. And this kind of gives me my guideline of what all I need to configure for this to work appropriately. And so you can see I need a trigger and that's going to be that RFID tag is going to be used as our trigger in the PLC. I'm going to need a database endpoint. And so that's just basically which database I'm pointing to because I could have multiple Microsoft SQL databases pulled into my team manager software. So I have to tell it which one to use. The map's going to be which fields in the table we're going to be pulling into the PLC tags and then the return endpoints where we're ending up, so which PLC we're going back into. So if I just do it in order and I right click on automation and click new trigger, you can see that you can we can type in RFID as our trigger. I'm going to do a periodic trigger and we'll go into more in depth of our trigger types in our trigger video. I'm just going to be monitor, monitoring that the tag that I pull in to see if it changes and if it changes that's when we'll execute the transaction to pull the data out of the SQL database into the PLC. I'm going to change our scan period to 250 milliseconds. That's the fastest we can scan and if I go and open the tag list 
I can pick that Control Logics PLC. And if I open this up, I can see my RFID tags right there. And I can drag and drop that in there. And now that I have that configured, I can just go over here and grab it and pull it into my trigger pane. For my database endpoint, like I said, I only have one database connected, but if I had more, I'd have to put the particular one that I'm trying to connect to. So if I just right click on my data database and click new endpoint, and this is where you'd also configure your transaction logs and store and forward or your failover for redundancy in case your system, if your network went down or something like that. But we would cover that more in depth in our endpoint video. Now that I have that, I can just drag and drop it into the database endpoint. Next, we need to create a map. And it's going to be a unidirectional map because we're just pulling data from the database into the PLC, so it's only going one way. The procedure and function will be if we have something going into the database and coming back out. But we're just going to do the unidirectional. For my input, it's going to be from the database. So if I click input and then go to the Microsoft SQL database, it's going to open up those tags. I highlight them and drag and drop them in and it's asking me if I'd like to copy everything I only want to grab these the model number the paint type the paint level the oil type and oil volume so I'm gonna click no because if I clicked yes it would go ahead and grab RFID and temp ID and so it pulled those in now as my output we're gonna be outputting that from the database into the PLC so I'm going to open up these tags if I go back over here and very similarly as we did on the database do the same thing and pull those in there's a little off right there so I can just highlight those and drag them up then I can click this button and it'll just connect everything if everything's lined up how you want it to be and right here it's giving me a warning because I have a 32-bit integer in my database, but it's going into a 16-bit integer in my PLC. So T-Manager will do that, but it's giving you a warning that you could lose data. I know I'm gonna be fine with my values that I have set up in my database so that I'm not gonna lose any data. I'll click OK. Now that I have that map configured, I can drag and drop it into my transaction as or into my message path and then I just need to create my return endpoint which is going back into the PLC if I click OK Now I'm going to, since I'm only pulling one row of data from our table that we looked at earlier, I'm going to enter one. And we also need to set up our WHERE clause. So our WHERE clause is telling the T-Manager where we're pulling data from. So I'm going to open up database schema. I'm going to click and drag and drop the RFID tag. And then I'm going to open up the tag list and drag and drop it in there. So what this is saying is where the RF, we're gonna pull data in the database where the RFID matches the RFID tag in the PLC. So if I have a two in my PLC, like if I have a RFID value of two in my PLC, it's gonna come into the database, look at this table and say, oh, here's where RFID equals two pull this model, this paint type, paint level, etc., into the PLC. And click OK. Click OK. And now I have to turn all these on to run. Because I this just gives you more detailed control. Say I had a bunch of other triggers in here, a bunch of other transactions going on and I didn't want to stop them all, I could configure them individually to which ones I wanted to be leave running and which ones I wanted to edit. 
Then I'm going to go up here and click Run on the project. And so now, if we come into our PLC and we were talking about changing that RFID tag to a two, so if uh, a car comes in and it has an RFID value of two and it gets entered into the PLC, you can see that it changed it to the GM model that we were looking at. And if I can change it to a four, it's scanning this tag every 250 milliseconds. And then if it sees that it's changed from a two to a four, when I hit enter right here, it'll go ahead and pull those new values in. And that's it for the recipe download slash database select video. If you have a topic you would like covered, please leave it in the comments section below. Thank you.